this video, we're going to see how to connect Eclipse with a Spring Boot project up to GitHub. Just want to show a little bit about GitHub first of all. This is my public GitHub presence. And this is a look at the last time I taught an enterprise application class, which essentially is uh, what I'm redoing through this series of videos, just with a little technology update. It's a bit tricky because some videos require some context or a bit of background information and can't really be done in isolation. So what I tend to do is commit frequently about, after about every two to three videos to GitHub so that that way you can click on this little diff thingy here and you can see exactly what I changed in one specific video. So I've just recently started this project in Eclipse and I want to go ahead and commit it so that I can start pushing these things up. First of all, we have to tell the project to be GitHub enabled, so or Git enabled rather. So uh, I've actually already done it to this plant places application here. So I want to show how to do it. I, I did that in a previous video. I just want to show you how to do it. Uh, first step is right click and choose team and then share project. And by the way, I'm doing this on just a little dummy project called Hello World. But again, just want to walk you through the steps. Uh, okay, so uh, we could decide where to put our repository. We might already have a repository, as you see I have a couple here. Or we can say create it in the root folder of the project itself. Uh, go ahead and tick. And uh, when we're happy with that, choose create repository and then finish. Now you see here it's saying, okay, we recommend that you don't do it in the Eclipse workspace, which is probably a good idea. Uh, so it might be a better idea to go back and uh, choose a whole separate directory, but nonetheless, uh, you know, that's personal preference. So I've already done that step in this Plant Places project. If you go under Team, you'll see that it has a lot more options than the ones we just saw under Hello World. So initially, you just see Apply Patch and Share Project. But after you actually set up the GitHub repository, uh, then you get a whole lot more options under Right Click and Team. Uh, one of them is Commit, which means basically just uh, commit anything that I've changed. And so I can go ahead and do a commit. I, I don't think I have anything here. now. nothing that's significantly changed. So I'm not going to worry about it. One thing I will point out is the importance of the uh, .gitignore file. And that will filter out things that should not be committed to version control. Generally, anything that compiles or anything that is environment specific, we don't want to commit to version control. Now, there is a little shortcut if you want to create one of these gitignore files. We just go to this gitignore.io and we can type in something like Eclipse. Uh, I'm curious to see if they have anything for Spring Boot. Uh, nothing for Spring Boot. Uh, that's okay. Let's stick with Eclipse because that does have a lot of files that are uh, th that does have a lot of files that are uh, should not be committed to, to version control. So I'll go ahead and choose Create, and what we will see here is that it is essentially saying these are things that I do not want to push to version control. Anything in bin, anything in temp, any of these things which are essentially binary files. So you can copy this, you can place this into your project. Typically goes all the way up at the root level. Uh, as a matter of fact, just a moment, a little bit of control shift R magic and then dot git ignore. And you can see my git ignore file here. Uh, this one was generated for me. And so you see it uh, kind of leaves a bit to be desired, honestly, because we're in Eclipse and here it has IntelliJ and NetBeans things, which probably aren't very relevant. So what I'm tempted to do is just grab this. Whoops, sorry, just a moment. Uh, just go ahead and grab this. I'm, I'm doing this through an emulator, so my shortcut keys don't all work. So I have to do it the long way. So copy this and put it into the gitignore file. Now, the trick is... I kind of have a, a dilemma here, and that is I don't want to have junk in here I don't need, but on the other hand, it's not really hurting anything per se. So we have some we have some configurations in the Skidignore for STS, IntelliJ IDEA, and NetBeans, but guess what? Not Eclipse. So uh, for cleanliness, I'm tempted to blow away the IntelliJ and the NetBeans stuff, uh, but just for safety, I'm going to go ahead and leave it in there, and I am simply going to paste what I got from that gitignore.io. And you see here we have all kinds of Eclipse specific stuff. So I save. Okay, save. Uh, with that, I might as well go ahead and commit. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and take this gitignore and I'm going to move it into my stage changes. And I'm going to say update gitignore. 
Okay, got it. And commit. Now I'm not going to push yet. I'm only committing locally. I'm not going to push yet because I haven't defined where I want to push this. So at the moment, just committing locally. So now we need to decide where we want to push all of this and we want to push it to GitHub. So I go back to team and I'm going to go to remote and I'm going to go to push and take a look here. It gives us some options here for a URI uh, and then some authentication. So I'm going to pop back over to GitHub just one moment. Notice here, this is the public view. So I'm going to go ahead and choose sign in. And after sign in, here I am, I see my smiling face and uh, in front of Sydney where I had the picture taken, but nonetheless. So I'm going to go to repositories and I'm going to choose new. It comes up with a little description here. So uh, Disco Spiff, and then we're gonna call this one Spring Boot Microservices. Uh, lots of different names I could give it, but we'll stick with that. So we'll just say uh, Lessons in Spring Boot and Microservices. Readme file. Love the readme file. You can start the repository with a readme or you can come back and add it later. Let me show you what I did with the readme file on a similar, uh, this is Java Full Stack Enterprise Web. This is essentially a very similar technology stack we're going through in this video series. Just something I did a couple years ago. So what you see down here is the readme file, the readme MD. It has a very simple markup language. But uh, what it does is, you see, I just put a little table in here with a glossary. As I've gone through this course, a piece of feedback I've frequently received is, man, there are a lot of words and a lot of definitions. Is there anywhere I can just refer to those all at once? So given that this is a teaching project and a learning project, I made a quick and dirty readme file here that actually has a, a fair amount of information really quickly. So now notice also we can add a git ignore file. Oh, love this. Look at this. So you can add a git ignore that already has all that Eclipse stuff assuming they have Eclipse, which I bet they do. Ooh, do they not have? I don't see Eclipse. So you know what? Let's stick with uh, the one we generated on, on gitignore.io. Add a license, probably not a bad idea there either. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Create Repository. And this gives me this link, Spring Boot Microservices, we see here. And I'm going to go ahead and click this icon, which is a copy icon. I go back to Eclipse. Remember, we left off here. Now watch what happens when I paste. It interrogates this and it says, oh, okay, so you're putting this on GitHub and this is kind of like the relative URL on GitHub. Uh, port protocol, don't worry too much about. I do need to put in my username and password. As you see, my password is just a bunch of circles. Just kidding. So I choose next. And one thing that I do want to verify here is if we go and take a look at the Spring Boot microservices, if I click before doing a push, all we see is this kind of quick setup little lesson here, but that will change as soon as we do a push. So uh, we can go master, that's fine. Uh, everything here looks good, choose add specs. So we're adding master to master and I'm happy with what I see. So I choose next again, master, master, new branch looks good. Uh, okay, and I will go ahead and choose finish. Look down here for status update. It will take just a moment. What's interesting is that I, what we're looking at right now, I'm in a, in a virtual machine environment that I'm accessing through a browser. This virtual machine is hosted at the University of Cincinnati. Uh, it's not my laptop itself. Uh, and then we have GitHub, which guess what is GitHub, which is hosted somewhere else. So we're kind of connecting from two different servers that neither of which are on my laptop, nonetheless. Let's go back and hit refresh now. Now you see when I hit refresh, we have a different look and feel. And now I'm going to click on commits. When I click on commits, we see a few commits that I did in prior videos uh, a few days ago. And then we also see this update.getignore, which I just did. Now let's just make sure that we have the machine well oiled. I'm going to go to my plant places controller and I'm just going to put uh, a little bit of, uh, just something silly, but a little bit of Javadoc just to confirm that my changes are working. So we'll say handle the start endpoint. Uh, you know what else we can actually, have to, I can think of something a, a, a little bit better than this, which is we probably ought to add an endpoint for no endpoint. In other words, like a default, just slash with nothing after it. So I'm gonna make that just slash 
and we will call this one index. Uh, and we'll go ahead and have it return start just the same. So all I've done is I've added a new endpoint, a new method, just a quick and dirty. I'm going to save. Uh, okay, go ahead. That's irrelevant. I, it was running in the debugger and it's just telling me, hey, don't need to run in the debugger anymore. Okay, take a look down here. First of all, I see my plant places controller. I see a couple of other files that were generated by Maven. I probably should add those to my git ignore so they don't appear as clutter here because these are things I don't necessarily need to push to version control. Let me take the one I do want to push to version control and just add a commit message that says add javadoc, add first index, or I don't know what to call that, add default slash endpoint, something like that. You know what I mean. Uh, now I'm going to choose commit and push. It'll bring up this dialog. Okay, once again, we can paste. Whoop, nope, that's not the, what we want to paste. There we go, a little bit better. Uh, now authentication. Uh, once again, put in my, uh, my credentials. I'm going to go ahead and say secure and secure store and secure store so I don't have to enter that every time. Choose next. Uh, looking good. And next. And finish. And okay. Uh, not going to worry about that just yet. Uh, so I have pushed and I'm going to close. And now let's run back and let's take a look at our commits that we had before. Note we had three commits. I'm going to hit refresh. And note that now we have four commits. I click on four commits and take a look, add javadoc, add default slash endpoint. Now let's click on this little kind of hexadecimal thing that we have over here. And if we take a look, note that the red indicates a line that was removed. In this case, it was simply white space. The green indicates what was added and the white indicates no change. So uh, just like my previous class where I went through and did all the commit, you know, commits with several videos, that's what I'll continue to do here so we can take a look one step at a time at what's going on. But nonetheless, we see now we were able to successfully push to GitHub. But you know what? I, I, I feel I'm itching because I know there's something left I have to do. Uh, probably be a good idea to think about this up front, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and clean it up now. Maven wrapper jar, Maven wrapper properties, MVN, MVNW. I don't want to push these things because they are compiled. So I navigate to my git ignore again in Eclipse, control shift R, and I'm going to say maven dash wrapper dot jar. And then I save. Now watch unstage changes. I save and it's gone. Maven dash wrapper. Asterisk, and that's going to take care of anything that has Maven wrapper. MVNW, asterisk, save, boom, take a look. A much less cluttered view. Now I can just say, okay, like all these changes, uh, we'll go ahead and say add that, and I'll say update git ignore and commit and push. And it's pushing. And you see much faster this time. I stored everything in the secure store and uh, it knows the repo to go to. The GitHub is much cleaner. Go ahead and close this. Just to confirm one more time, uh, let me go ahead and go into our controller. And again, add a kind of silly change, but something we can at least confirm that we have a change. We'll say handle the slash endpoint. There we go. And save. Okay, and double click here again. Okay, now take a look. Do you see how that plant places controller, which is the file that I just edited, appears in unstaged changes? You also notice that we have a kind of a greater than symbol there. Uh, so it indicates that uh, this file has changed. So we take this, we drop it, and uh, we'll just say update slash endpoint if we want, like so, and commit and push. But notice how much cleaner this user interface is when we don't have all the stuff we don't want to push in unstaged changes. In other words, the only thing we're going to see in unstaged changes are the things that we want to push to version control. This git ignore file is really important, especially if you're working in a group project or working with others, uh, doing any kind of code review, anything like that, because Eclipse, IntelliJ, all of the IDEs will have some kind of file that has a hard-coded path to your, uh, that's relevant only to your computer, would not be relevant to a teammate's computer. So uh, if a teammate were to have that file locally, 
uh, Eclipse or your development environment would be looking for a path that simply doesn't exist because it might be C users Brandon Jones or your C users Jennifer Marlowe or whatever. That's a WKRP reference if you didn't catch that one. But nonetheless, uh, those things are specific to your local computer. Compiled files, we don't like to push for two reasons. Number one, we can always regenerate them, so it's redundant to push it. Number two, Git has a really good way of looking at diffs. It doesn't have the ability to look at a compiled file and say, oh, okay, well, this has changed, and here's exactly the part that's changed. So if you are in the habit of pushing a lot of compiled files to Git or to GitHub, uh, it will look at those and say, oh my gosh, this whole thing has changed. And then once it goes over about 50%, once it realizes that more than 50% of the project has changed, you get into a multiple head scenario, which is a little tricky to get out of. Uh, doable, just tricky. So for that reason, we generally don't like to push those compiled files. So uh, I encourage you to look very closely at that git ignore file. And again, anything you see here will not get pushed. So uh, just make sure that the things you have in here will not get pushed and then everything else will get pushed. So uh, this video is about uh, in, in, about Git, uh, our, our GitHub project uh, pushing out there and the Git ignore file. I hope it's been helpful. We will certainly use this a lot more throughout this video series, uh, especially as we're doing code reviews. We'll use that quite a bit. So I look forward to uh, hearing from you in the comments. Thank you.